All right, today we're going to talk about making precast parking garages in Revit. We have two options that we usually deal with, and that is making structural framing out of double T's, which takes a lot of time because you have to make sure they're all on a reference plane and they're all angled the right way. And when you're in plan, you'll see this line here most of the time unless you do some fun f fancy stuff with the family then there's um, the problem that these parking stripes this parking stripe family does not show up as well it doesn't stick to this family or you'll end up with a million different hosts so that poses a problem the other problem we run into is you know when we don't want to take the amount of time to do that in schematic design we will just do you know a big slab like like 26 inch parking deck and that doesn't look good um, because it often looks the same as the elements and elevation or it just looks like two lines and it's confusing so the way around that is to go ahead and do a floor but make it a structural floor that has the T's built into it. Now the span on this one is the wrong way. So let me do this one. Here's a floor. And I made a floor called precast T. So when you draw the floor, it automatically draws the T's for you. And you don't have to worry about laying them out. You just draw the profile of the floor. Now, when this floor was drawn, they didn't put the span direction in there correctly. So I'm just going to go and change the span direction, and then you'll see the double T's. See the span direction here? I'm just going to change it. And then the section is going to show up correctly. But all you have to do to get this is draw the profile. When you do these, if you have a T that cuts through, say part of this T is cut like a foot short, you have to make a whole new family. When you do this, you can host parking stripes to it the T's show up right away and you can have a gap that shows the spacing of the T's now when you make this you make a you need to start with a structural floor and you have to have two profiles in here one for the topping thickness which is like this top two inches and one for the structural deck a structural deck profile is different than a regular profile that you make when you're making a wall sweep or a fascia or a slab edge so you have to create this and it's a single line it's not a closed profile like regular profiles and this thickness is measured from the bottom of this to whatever your top is I'm going to show you the family now so this is made up from this um, decking profile here and as you can see it's a single line so I created this and it's got variable web spacing so you know most of the time we're pretty diagrammatic but if you really want to have the T's shown four feet apart or three feet apart five feet apart whatever um, that's okay like I think I should be at four feet here and then um, oops, I need to add the overall depth then you'll just have your parameter for the overall depth and all your parameters need to be by type in order for this to, um, to work here so this can save you a lot of time um, from having to try to model all the T's and everything because I wanted to try to at least show somewhat what this was going to look like um, let's see if my if my family worked. I'm gonna these are the T's from a structural model. So I'm gonna try to take our parking garage floor and change it. Okay, see the span was done the wrong direction. This is a good way to check and make sure you got your spans done correctly. Um, here we go. So I'm gonna change the span. 
then okay so here we are let me see if I can get this to 34 inches let's see what happens when I do this okay so that topping is too thick so what I need to do is go to this um, decking profile and make one that's 34 inches so the overall depth is 34 inches so let me go over here these are not used let me delete these okay so my decking profile I'm going to duplicate this and make it 34 inches go to the type properties and hopefully my overall depth is 34 inches and go back to the floor here oops I, I need to change this to the 34 inch one so that's 34 this one I picked the 34 inch version let's hope it works there it goes okay so that's what the structural model has now the beautiful thing is I do, it's gonna fill my exact profile that I draw for my floor so there's no uh, no problem and that's that this is my test one here so up here this one is also uh, 34 precast T 34 inches and the span was the wrong way so I'm going to change that let's change my span direction close that up now I've got the Thirty. Uh, I got this uh, correct here. So anyway, I'm gonna get rid of all these T's, and then you got yourself a nice schematic. Really, for us, we can use it all the way up through construction documents for the structural T's. So I'm gonna get rid of all these, and then with these, you can still put your slope arrows and everything on them. So I'm going to change this to uh, 20 inches deep. All right, there you go.